So you're thinking about moving your family to Parkland, Florida, but you wanna know, is this a great place for families? What's up with Parkland? Well, in this video, we're gonna go over our four things that you absolutely need to know before moving to Parkland, Florida from someone who was born and raised in Parkland. Hey, my name is Andy Mandel. I'm a broker and the owner of the Remax Advisors office here in Parkland, Florida. And if this is your first time to the channel, this is where we go over everything there is to know about Parkland, Boca, and all the surrounding cities in South Florida. Eating, sleeping, living, playing, and enjoying the beautiful lifestyle that South Florida has. So if that interests you, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you get notified every time we do a new video. Seriously, hit the subscribe button right now. We get so many calls, texts, and emails every single day from people who are moving here to South Florida, and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about making a move to South Florida, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. You can even send a smoke signal or carrier pigeon. However you wanna communicate, we got your back when moving to South Florida. So the first thing you need to know about Parkland is that the name Parkland is pretty true. There are a lot of parks and the whole city kind of has a park type vibe. So all the streets are tree lined. It's got a very residential, you know, beautiful feel to it. We got a lot of parks. There's actually five parks here in the city. So on the east side, we have Terramar Park. That's a really big park. It's got baseball fields, basketball courts, uh, you know, soccer, football fields, jungle gyms, playgrounds, open area for kids to play. This is where growing up, this is where I would go play. You know, I was a big baseball player growing up. So, you know, we would play, you know, Little League, we played travel ball, all that kind of stuff. Terramar Park is a great place for that. I remember growing up, Anthony Rizzo was actually born and raised in Parkland. He plays for the Chicago Cubs. I was a catcher playing baseball growing up. I remember distinctly being there at Terramar Park. He steps into the batter's box, is hitting some bombs. So it's a great place. We got a lot of good sports here at Terramar Park and in Parkland. Uh, the next park we have is Quigley Tennis Center. So this used to be where like T-Ball was, but they just completely redesigned it a couple years ago. Now they got 12 tennis courts. It's a true tennis center. So if your kids are into tennis or you want them to learn to play tennis, uh, Quigley is the perfect place for them. As you head a little farther west into Central Parkland, we have Liberty Park and we have Barkland, which is the uh, dog park here in Parkland. So on a Saturday or Sunday morning, you'll find a lot of families enjoying their morning coffee, letting the kids and the pets run around in either Barkland or in Liberty Park. So there's a you know, big playground, there's open field, there's jungle gyms, all that kind of stuff here at Liberty Park. And then the dog park is great as well. They got a separate spot for smaller dogs and for bigger dogs. So everyone in the family can go get their exercise and run around on, on the weekend mornings. Finally, the last park we have is Pine Trails Park. So this is a newer park. As Parkland continued to develop and grow and more and more families came, they needed another big park. So this is very similar to Terramar Park. They got the baseball fields, they got the basketball courts, soccer, football, jungle gym, playground, all that kind of stuff right there. It's on the west side of the city. Uh, they also have an amphitheater that's there. So they'll have concerts at the amphitheater. Um, so Pine Trails Park is a really, really nice, big popular park at the uh, equestrian center here in Parkland as well. There's a big open area and during the winters, while it's not necessarily a park, this is where they have the Parkland Farmer's Market. So during the winters, it's every other week uh, and we have a big farmer's market where a lot of people will come in from all over the place. You got you know, great food, good entertainment, music playing. It's a really, really fun thing to do and to take your family during the winter months here at the Parkland Equestrian Center as well. So the next thing you need to know about Parkland is the location. So we're right here in the northwest most portion of Broward County. So you're right on the border between Broward and Palm Beach counties. So Parkland was designed to be remote, to have that residential suburban feel. So you're you know, removed from the big shopping centers and the downtowns and that kind of congestion. It's a, a very quiet, peaceful way of life here. And it's like that on purpose. So you're removed from a lot of the, the congestion of a downtown or even you know, Boca. Boca is going to have a lot more commercial development than Parkland has. Parkland probably has four or five commercial plazas in it. Uh, there's one on the west side with, you know, there's a Walmart plaza and then there's a Publix plaza with a couple other shops and stuff there. There's another Publix plaza towards the north end where they're building some of the new construction and there's some restaurants in there. And then on the far east end of Parkland, there's another commercial plaza as well with you know, gas stations and restaurants. There's a BJ's, you know, a typical, it's kind of like a Costco. So there's a lot of that stuff on the outskirts on the east side of Parkland, but when you're in Parkland driving through, you don't really see a lot of commercial development. And again, it was designed that way on purpose to give you a very residential suburban type feel 
while you're in the city. So anything you need, you're gonna be driving a little bit farther to get it. It's really not that far. You're gonna go into Coral Springs or into Coconut Creek or into Boca to find more commercial plazas and stuff like that. Um, but it's maybe an extra 10 minute drive if you don't mind the drive, uh, but it keeps the city feeling residential and suburban and that's a, a really nice feeling. You don't see that almost anywhere else down here. So it's a unique city in that respect. Um, but you know, growing up there, I always really liked it. It's an excellent quality of life, a really good place to come when you're raising family, if you want to get away from the hustle and bustle and have that residential suburban feel. The next thing you need to know about Parkland is the schools. So the reason people really move to Parkland, the big draw are the A plus rated schools. So we have excellent schools here. There are three elementary schools, one middle school, one high school, and there's also a charter school that they just built here in 2021 in Parkland. So how the elementary schools work, wherever your house is, you're going to be assigned to a certain school based on where your house is. But for elementary schools, you can apply for a rezoning to any of the elementary schools in Parkland. And they do that based on availability. So if you have young kids, if you, you know, like another, another school better for whatever reason, you can apply to get rezoned. If one of your kids gets in there, all of the rest of your kids farther down, they're gonna get grandfathered in so they can go there as well. So you may just have a preference of, I like this school versus this one for you know whatever program they have or whatever reason, you can apply to get rezoned. But there's three elementary schools and they're all excellent schools. There's one middle school for the entire city as of you know, the recording of this video. Um, but part of Parkland is actually technically part of Coral Springs. The, the, western, uh, the southwestern part of Heron Bay is the big neighborhood on the west side of Parkland. Even if it's technically in Coral Springs, you are still zoned for West Glades, which is the Parkland Middle School. And then there's Stoneman Douglas High School. Everyone's heard of Stoneman Douglas now. Unfortunately, you know, we had a, a shooting at Stoneman Douglas. I went to the high school. It was very sad. I know a lot of the families in this area who were really, really affected. A lot of the kids were really affected. And it's, it was really, really terrible what happened. But you know, I, I can totally testify to the quality of the education that you get at Stoneman Douglas High School. It is an excellent school, like I said. I went there myself. I also went to private school in the area before going to Douglas, and I can 100% tell you, you know, with no questions about it, it's the same education at a private school as I got at Stoneman Douglas. There are kids at both who you know, didn't really want to learn and they wanted to, to slack off or whatever, and you're going to have that anywhere, but there's kids at both private school and public school here who are going on to be, you know, to Ivy League schools and be doctors and lawyers and stuff like that. So the education really is good. Um, this, that's why people are moving here to Parkland. Some of the homes in Heron Bay are technically in Coral Springs, but still zoned for the Stoneman Douglas High School. If you're in that section of Coral Springs, part of Heron Bay, you're also zoned for the Parkland Elementary School. If you go to the northwest part of Coral Springs, so still that 33076 zip code, you are zoned for Stoneman Douglas, which is the Parkland High School. So you can save a little money because Coral Springs is a little bit less expensive than Parkland, and we'll get into real estate in a minute. Uh, but you can save money by getting a home in Northwest Coral Springs and still send your kid to Stoneman Douglas. The downside to that is they have to go to some of the other elementary schools and the middle school in Coral Springs. Now, those are excellent, excellent schools. So there's nothing wrong with being in that area. There's a ton of people who want to be in that Northwest part of Coral Springs to get your kids into the Parkland High School. Uh, it's just, it's not the Parkland Middle School or Parkland Elementary School. So keep that in mind, but you can still be in Coral Springs and get into the Parkland High School in certain areas. So you have to be in that 33076 zip code, west, uh, west of University, north of Wiles Road. So let's talk real estate. So Parkland has a lot of gated neighborhoods. So if you're just driving through the area, there's gonna be a lot of neighborhoods that you just can't get into because there's, there's gated communities. So there's a lot of HOAs and they have a range of types of communities. There are a lot of, there are a few communities that have no HOA, but for the most part, most of the communities have an HOA. Now you get you know, a range, you get a really, really low HOA where they don't have a ton of amenities. And then you get up to, let's say Parkland Golf and Country Club that has you know, the golf course there. It's got the big clubhouse and the gym and similar to Heron Bay, all the amenities that you could ever want, you know, basketball courts, playgrounds, tennis courts, all that kind of stuff. There are communities within Parkland that have that. And because they have those amenities, the HOAs are a little bit higher, uh, but there are also some neighborhoods that have very low or no HOAs. So there's options to choose from. 
Parkland doesn't have any country clubs like you'll see in Boca. There is a neighborhood called Parkland Golf and Country where they have a golf course and you can buy into that kind of country club lifestyle if you want to, but it's separate and not mandatory. So there are no communities in Parkland that have the mandatory equity fees like you'll see in some of the country clubs over in Boca. There's some new construction communities that as I'm recording this video at the beginning of 2021 are just being finished now. So there's in the northwest part of, of Parkland, there's Miralago, there's Cascada, there's Watercrest, and there's Parkland Bay. So those are all brand new communities. Most of them are being built by Lennar, which is America's largest home builder. So those are newer. And then there's everything else that was typically built early 2000s, all the way back into the 70s. So Parkland is a relatively new community, a new city. So you'll have homes built in the 70s all the way up to the you know 2020 and 2021, giving you a big range of prices and different types of property to choose from. But Parkland is expensive. There's a uh, you get a lot more bang for your buck in Parkland compared to some of the other cities, maybe like Boca. But it starts at a higher price point. So they have two neighborhoods that have little condos. So there's one section of Heron Bay that has condos, and those are going to start around the 300 mark, between three to 350. There's another section of Parkland Golf and Country Club that has little condo coach home type properties. Um, and those are gonna start in the four to 450 range. So you can get some good size condo and, and uh, condo options in Parkland, but really most of the development is single family houses. There are townhouses as well. The townhouses will start you know, 400 to 450 ish range. And again, depending on when you're watching this video, I don't normally like to talk about prices because prices change every single day. Uh, but you know, as of 2021, uh, townhouses are between four and 450. Condos, if you can find one, because there's only one neighborhood, between three and 350. Uh, and then there's single family houses. The median single family house price range starts at about 800,000. There are homes that'll start uh, around 500 and go up from there, but the median price point for a single family house in Parkland is $830,000. So Parkland is expensive. It's not cheap to live here, but the people who do live here, you know, it's a lot of you know, white collar professionals and people like that who have more money. You know, it's an affluent city uh, and they're, they're moving to Parkland because they like that suburban residential feel for the schools and it's a great place to raise their family, but home prices are expensive here in Parkland. So if you're thinking about making a move to Parkland, we'd love to be your realtor of choice. We grew up here, we know all these neighborhoods like the back of our hand. If you have any questions about the city of Parkland, what's going on here, what's around the area, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. We'd love to be your realtor of choice when moving in South Florida.